Hi, NeuroNation. I'm Emily Morgan from NeuroVlog. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today, we are going to be covering how to improve elevation or reach in your client's arms for function by going after that stiff thoracic spine that really does need to be addressed for best success and for injury prevention too. Okay, so a lot of our clients, it could be um, someone who has Parkinson's disease and uh, they have that very classic uh, forehead, head, rounded shoulders, stooped posture. It could also be someone who has now had a stroke. Uh, they are in this position, right? And the moment they try to elevate their arms and reach, they might have some pain, yes, but they can't get very high. And that is because that when a person is really rounded in the scapula because of that stiff thoracic spine in limited extension, it does not make it easy at all for the scapula to be able to upwardly rotate on the rib cage, which is critical when we're talking about trying to get more elevation and pain-free elevation. There's four parts to the shoulder complex itself to consider, of course. There's the uh, sternoclavicular joint, there's the acromioclavicular joint, and of course we've got the glenohumeral joint, the, the large one that we always think of as being the primary uh, lifter or elevator of the shoulder. And then of course there's the all-important scapular thoracic system. It's not really a joint in a traditional sense because there is no joint capsule, but there is an articulation of the ribs and the scapula. And what happens over time, and with that slumped posture, is the scapula moves into more abduction, and oftentimes it goes into this tilt position as well, and it makes it uh, a huge struggle to get any kind of upward rotation at all. And that can create pain. So let's cover some easy exercises that you can do with your patients. And I suggest giving them to them before you even go after the traditional elevation of the scapula or the shoulder blade pinches. So let's cover them right now. So for the first exercise, you will need your client to be seated in a chair. Now, if wheelchair is the only option, I do highly recommend making sure the foot plates and the leg rests are removed so the client can firmly place their feet on the floor. You'll have better results that way. But if it's possible to transfer to a chair, I do recommend that. And of course, this can be done in clinic or in the client's home. Now, you notice I have a pillow right here. You can use a pillow, or you can use a rolled up towel, or you can use a foam cylindrical roll. All right, so you'll have the client seated in the chair, and then you'll need to do some adjustments, of course, but you're going to make sure that you have that pillow, that towel roll, or that foam roll placed horizontally in the small of their back. And You'll have them place their arms across their chest. They can cradle it if need be for support. And you're gonna ask them to slowly lean back. Of course, the pillow is helping stabilize me so that I can try to get extension in certain areas of that thoracic spine that I need to uh, work on, all right? You can move the roll up to different parts of the spine and it will feel a little different. So I recommend doing about 10 or so. And then you can move on, okay? Now, the next one I'm gonna show you is from a supine position. So if your patient can get on the floor, that would be ideal. But of course, if that does not work, try to find a uh, mat table surface. Last resort, a bed might work as well. It just depends on how firm that mattress is. The second and last thoracic extension stretch that I'll show you today is going to be done in supine. So you can use a mat table or you can use a bed, but the patient does have to be on a flat surface. We're going to be using a very stiff 
full foam roll today demonstrated on myself, but you can also use a half foam roll or a rolled up towel or even a softer foam roll. The foam roll will need to be placed in the lower thoracic spine area. The client is going to lean back. They might need some head support, so just be ready to provide them with that if you need to. They do have the ability to hold their arms behind their head, ask them to do so. But just like the chair, you're going to have them extend and then rise up. Extend, rise up. You can do that 10 times, and then you can also roll that foam roll a little higher up on the thoracic spine to catch a different area. And then this is an ideal time to actually work on that shoulder elevation because everything is in better alignment at that point. Those were the two thoracic extension exercises that I really wanted to show you today. Make sure not to leave it out of the picture when you're trying to improve reach for your client. Thanks so much. Tune in next time, guys. We'll have great neuro vlogs coming up for you really soon. Bye now.